This is Hans Solo Board Gaming. Today we take Circadian's first light on a solo play. Hey guys, here we have Sicardian's first light set up for solo play. Before we get into play, I'll do a quick run through over the boards and some of the rules uh, that will dictate how we play. So there's four phases to each round in this game, the plan, execute, harvest, and rest phase. Let's take a look at the plan phase. During the plan phase, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to reveal the next event card. The event cards can be positive or negative, and they're going to break the rules somehow in this game. You'll see those in more detail as I play through. The last event is always end of an era. You reveal all hidden gem caches. That's when you're going to reveal these six tiles, revealing victory points underneath them. And we'll get more into detail about that later. So after you've, so after you've revealed the event card you're going to roll your dice and plan them by placing them on your player board in either garages or on farms let's take a look at the player board so we can have a better idea of what planning really entails so your player board basically has two sections it has garages and it has farms garages are locations in which you'll action put place dice to action out on the boards um, that are not your player board. Farms will give you some sort of produce that you'll follow this conversion chart to determine how many goods you get for placing a dice there. The other parts of your um, player board is your cargo where it reminds you that you can have a max of eight item cards and five dice. You start with three. With cards you'll draw five, choose three to keep. Let's take a look at uh, the garage a little bit more. The garage is where you're going to action dice to do things out in the eight uh, action boards. You won't pay any cost of any of the boards until the execute phase. The planning phase, you're s simply planning what dice you want to use. When, um, it is important to remember when actioning dice during the execute phase, you must do it from left to right pattern. The number above the slots indicate how much algae each dice will cost you to play. Below there are uh, ships. You start with one ship that allows you to manipulate a dice up or down one value. You can upgrade ships by going to the foundry, and we'll talk about that more later, but let's look at this example. You now would have two ships, one that manipulates this dice so it could be a five. Dice, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I do not believe carry over flip to the other side becoming a one. So the only option for this die would become a six. This will allows you to uh, add up to two so this five could become a six. Now for end game purposes, oh and this dice would cost you one um, one algae in order to place out in, uh, into the boards. This die would cost you two algae. Now after upgrade, at the end of the game you are going to score victory points in your garage based on the leftmost un, um, unupgraded tile. So the leftmost un unupgraded tile would be this three. So for my garages I would score a total of three, four points. Meaning if I got to max out my garages, I would score 8 plus however points are showing, 9, 10, 11. The other part of your board is the farms. And the farms work a lot like garages in terms of upgrades. You're going to buy upgrades from the laboratory and add them to your farms. Farms can be placed over old farms. When wanting... If needing to replace a, uh, a tile, that is also allowed, both in the garage and in the uh, farm. Same as with the garage, the leftmost uncovered tile will be the victory point you score added with any other victory point markers on tiles you bought. 
Um, if you've completed all of your farms, you'll get seven from this portion of your board. One tip that they give you in order to remember how you're actioning your dice is to put the goods that you'll be using above them so you can remember what it is you want it to be doing. That's the plan action for your turn. The plan action for the AI is going to be no actions. They don't do anything during plan. So let's move on to our next phase, which is the execute phase. The execute phase begins with the headquarters. The headquarters allow you, when you action dice to the headquarters, they stay on that board between rounds, and they will get to go first before any other actions are taken the next round. Also, whenever you action dice at the headquarters, you're gonna gain two item cards or five water. The first spot of the headquarters has a special ability that allows you to flip the value of the coin when placed, or the dice when placing it. After all dice in the headquarters have been actioned, the AI will pull two scheme cards. So let's take a look at what that means. The AI is gonna draw two cards from this deck, one at a time, re resolving the results of that card. So when you turn over the first card, you'll place it in this spot and you see that there is a move harvester symbol. You're going to move the AI's harvester um, in the direction of the die value shown. So here we look at the control room to confirm in which direction we'll go. It will go this direction. So we will then move the AI's harvester in that same matching direction. The AI harvester moves until it hits a good, I mean a gem, excuse me. Um, or the edge of the board. When it hits the edge of the board, or uh, it stops. If it runs into a gem, it collects that gem into its goods. If the AI goes over water, the water is then uh, discarded into the general supply. After moving the AI's harvester, you will then action dice for the AI. The AI will always place the value of the dice shown in whatever board you can. You start to you look in the top option first. If the AI has the gems to afford it, it will place a die at that place. So this tells us to place one four die at the depository and discard one gem. Well, we have one gem, so we will discard that, and we will place a four at the depository. And when placing it. In the AI, we always place at the topmost level of the repository. We've completed one action on this card, so this card is done. We'll draw our second scheme card, and it will be a four. I have no jumps, so I can't place at the depository, so then I will play at the foundry with the place value of four. and he'll draw a third card. On his last one, he has a five. He can't play at the depository, he has no gems. He can't play at the foundry because there's only one spot. So he will mine, and when placing on boards, you place always on the leftmost, and he will gain one gem. So we've completed the two scheme cards for the AI. Now we go to the player actions. The player actions are what is the time in which you're going to allocate your action, your dice to different boards all across uh, the, the world. So let's take a look at how that's done. When actioning dice, you have to move from left to right um, and play, pay the value of the action plus the value of any algae it costs to send that dice out. Let's take a look around the board and see what actions are available. At the academy, depending on your dice value, it depends. will determine how what type of good you must discard. The amount of dice you want in return will dictate how many goods you have to discard. So for instance, if I place this one here, I could discard either four water or 10 water to gain either one dice or two dice. The foundry is based also on face value of your dice that you've placed there. Depending on your place value, it depend, determines which pile you'll draw from. It will cost two energy or 10 water in order to use the foundry. To upgrade your farms, you're gonna go to the laboratory. The laboratory, you need two dice of the exact same value along with three algae or 10 water, and you'll get to draw any tile 
doesn't matter on dice value to add to your farms. The mining camp is very interesting. You once you put action a dice there, you will take the axe and subtract it by the dice value. So six minus six that determines how much water I have to pay, which is zero. Conversely, if I would have played here, six minus five equals one. One water gets me one gem. The market allows you to trade goods that you have for other goods. The dice value of the dice that you've played there determines how many trades you can make. When actioning dice to the control room, the dice value will determine the direction in which your harvester will move. After paying two energy or ten water, move the harvester in one, spa one space in the direction of the dice value. We'll get more into the board and what it does during the harvest phase. At the depository, you are going to put dice in one of the values shown, either three, four, five, or six. Once you've placed a dice there, you open the uh, opportunity to purchase and play or play item cards. Item cards have costs at the top left, victory point values at the top right, and some sort of rule breaking mechanic or bonus at the bottom. This one says every time I go to the market, I gain five water. There are also end game scoring items that allow you to score so many victory points per resource. So you action a dice here, you get to play an item card, and then you get one, a one-time benefit that's to the right. If I place in the top row, I get to move my harvester. If I place in the middle row, I'll get a dice. If I place in the bottom row, I'll get two item cards. Any dice action to the depository are gone for the rest of the game. In order to resupply, you may need to visit the academy. The last board we're going to talk about is the negotiation board. The negotiation board has three tracks for the three different clans. Every time you place a dice there, you're going to get one of the clan actions, depending on the track in which you laid it. The cost to place a dice is indicated here by resource type and the amount. The victory points that you'll earn for placing a dice there at the end of the game are shown here. You, during negotiations, you can either have setbacks or advancements. Setbacks work like this. The first time a dice value of that value is shown, you may move a marker from that dice value to one of the benefits. The benefits are as, are as follows. Gain a farm, gain a ship, move your harvester, gain a dice, gain a gem, gain two cards. The setbacks work like this. Once in one track, one of the conditions have met, you'll move a, a token from the left side to the right side. Here, I have two values that are the same in a row. I will then move this token to one of these setbacks. The setbacks are as follows. Lose two guards, lose a dice, lose a gem. Move your harvester one space towards the center. Discard a ship, discard a farm. When checking for advancements and setbacks, it's important to remember to only check the column of the track in which you've played. You will not combine from different tracks to determine if you've met a setback condition. Dice allocated to the negotiation board stay there for the return of the game. In order to replenish, I recommend you go to the academy. If you cannot not afford dice that you've planned in the garage, You'll then discard them directly to the cantina. At the end of your turn, you'll gain two, you'll, I'm sorry, you'll immediately gain two water for each dice discarded this way. Once all player actions are completed, you'll then move to the harvest phase. During the harvest phase, the AI will return dice from the six action boards out in front. So he'll return these two dice to his, his player board. He will then gain gems. He is not going to gain any gems because he does not have a dice in this spot. So he will not gain any gems this turn. We will then do our harvest phase. During the harvest phase, you're going to look at the location of your harvester and gain the items of that hexagon. So for this example, I would gain one dice and two algae. It's very important to note that the different values change around the planet. For example, if I go ahead this direction, I could gain more water. If I headed this direction, I could gain more power. If I headed this direction, I could gain more algae. The second part of the harvest phase is harvesting from your farms that you've, from dice you've allocated during the planning phase. Some farms are activated by dice shown by the shaded box. Other 
farms are passive and will just automatically give you those goods. So for this example, this farm makes uh, adds three to the value of all the dice um, that are placed in the farms. So this three actually becomes a six. Consulting the chart, I could either take eight water or four algae. If I played here, then I could either take I could take a gem and a dice. So if I placed here and I wanted water, I could get a total of eight water for the six here because of the plus three, it becomes a six, and three more for this passive farm that doesn't need activation. The last phase of the round is the rest phase. Now during the rest phase, the, the AI will gain dice uh, depicted by its rightmost placed dice. So this dice is placed here, it's the rightmost one, which means he gains one dice. These two pictures are just a fancy way of saying that the AI will always start the round next round, will always end the round with three dice, at least three dice. So I, they don't tell you this, but I, uh, during the rest phase, I also discard the AI's deck. During the player's rest phase, the player will return any dice from the six action boards and any dice from their farm to their supply. Remember, at the end of this round, you must check to see if you have less than eight cards, less than eight or less cards, or five or less dice. One of my favorite parts of this game is the variable player powers that you can use uh, for each game. The powers are so awesome that it really changes the feel of each game because your focus is going to be on that player power. They're very strong. For the game that you're going to be seeing, I am picking Sunari from the Allies expansion. And that one, I'm going to begin the game with a unique farm tile installed on my research base. And that's this one here. It is spend a uh, six to get a gem and a dice. And that goes right here in this first garage. So when you watch the playthrough and you see that I have a gra uh, farm here, excuse me, already without even having played anything, you'll know why. And that should be everything you need to know in order to play Circadian's First Light. So during the overview, I did flip over the first event card. We're just going to leave that one turned over. The event this time is Fresh Hands. Gain one additional die when action at the Academy. So that means if I'm at the Academy and I spend the less amount, I'm going to get two dice this time. If I spend the more amount, pay more, I'd actually get three dice. Um, don't really action, I don't really negotiate or deposit this early in the game because I don't really have goods for it. Um, so I could take that opportunity to get my five dice right away. But let's see um, what my role is and let's try to plan out what we're going to do. Okay, so we got some, some variation here. Well, I personally... Um, one of the driving forces in every game I've played is my, my player power. Well, she doesn't have a player power. She just gets this bonus tile. So if I'm going to apply that same concept of using this to dictate a lot of my actions, I would think that I'd want to try to use this uh, spot as much as possible. So I did roll a six, so I'm going to put the six there. I'm going to farm, get a gem, and an extra dice. Um, the... Uh, doesn't help with the event. Probably won't visit the academy now that I'll have four dice. Um, getting two more really wouldn't help me right now. Maybe if I wiggle around and maybe do the headquarters. Because I don't think um, maybe I'd be able to, to buy the soda supply. I'd have to get an algae and an energy. That's not happening this turn. So. Let's see what my other options are with three and two. One of the other things I like to do early is to move. So a three or a two will both move me down to the right. And that's going to send me here. I could end up getting two dice here. If I play my three here, I get one there and one for my farm. So then I could max out and start trying to get multiple things done, farming a lot more with the extra dice. Because I'm going to have to generate algae in order to play dice out. Um, so I kind of like that idea of moving my harvester early. If you don't move, you just get one of each, and I, that's not very helpful. 
um, it's it's nice, but it's not very helpful. So let's say that let's do our control room with a three and head over to get some. Although the two would be nice to give me extra water. I think I want the dice though. Yeah, let's go with the dice. So we'll do the three and we'll go here and we'll pay one algae and I'll play two energy to do that. So now the question is what do we do with our other dice, our two? Well, let's look over here. We won't need the academy because we're getting two dice, one from the harvest phase, both from the harvest phase, one from the planet, one from my farms. A two would give me this ship, which would give me a plus two value. Um, if I put this dice in the uh, plus or minus one, I could play this one and get this cancel the algae, which is really nice early, especially when I have five dice. I'm not going to have a lot of algae. I'm not farming anything except a gem, and the gem's going to help me with victory points or trading for things later on, but this first turn I won't have anything. So let's do that. We'll use the two and this ten water, and we're going to make it a one and go to here so we can put that on one of these probably this one to negate that negative two um, cost of algae okay so I've planned out what I'm doing with my dice let's see if I remember when it comes back around that's one of the big issues I have with this game but if we follow our phases we just did the plan revealing the event and planning our dice and the AI has no action, so now when they execute the headquarters phase, there are no dice in the headquarters, so we're going to go play the two scheme cards for the AI. So we're going to play the first one. So remember, the, on the first card, we're going to move our harvester in the direction of the dice value shown. So a six is going to move it in this direction, so I take its harvester, I move it all, I continue to move it until it runs into either the edge or a good. And then I take that good. Now that I've done that, I now place a dice with a six value in the green track. And this means I spend the amount of gems shown in the red track. Let's take a look at what, how that plays out. So the card told me to put a six in the green range for the, the amount of gems I ha the AI has. The AI has only one gem. Ah, but the issue is I have to pay algae here for green, right? Nope, not for the AI. The AI is going to pay just the price of gems for each track. So you're going to use this track to determine the price everywhere else. So if he had two, if, if the AI had two gems, he'd place the dice here. If he had five gems, he'd place the dice, dice right there, matching that five and that level. He only has one dice, so he's not going to be able to do this action. So let's take a look at his next possible action. So the next possible action is for him to, to action dice to the academy. So let's see how that goes. The card told him to put a value of six, so he is going to put a value of six. The, the card told us to take two dice, so we take two dice. The AI is not affected by any of the action cards, so he won't be gaining his extra dice. Let's see where these dice go on the board. So we add them um, to the rightmost space. So at this point, um, during the harvest phase, he's going to get two dice at this point if he doesn't return any dice from the board, which we know he will because he plays at the academy. So right now he's in line to get three dice, but, uh, three gems at the harvest phase. But he does have one more card to pull. Let's see if he places anything. So it's going to be another six value die. And this one tells us he's going to place... Uh, a six at the depository and discard one so gem. I'm discarding the gem and I'm putting the six at the topmost spot of the depository. The, um, end game, his pip value is going to be counted here in the depository. So this is like him playing a six point item card. Um, that's that's the comparable scoring um, that I think about with, with that action. All right, so we've done the two cards. He's done one action on each card. That's the end of the AI's execute phase. So now we go to my execute phase. And if I remember correctly, I'm going to use this two to turn to go to here, and I'm spending ten water to gain this 
ship. Which, if I, if I put here, it won't cost me any algae. I'll have two left over. But if I go here, it's going to help me more in the long run because I'm going to be playing three dice up here, I believe. Because if I'm getting a gem each time from this farm, I'm going to want to start going to the market and getting other goods. And I am going to have five dice. And the fact playing all three of my farms is possible, but not probable. So the question is, where do I place this ship? And I am going to place it here. Um, just because I think the paying two algae over the course of six more rounds is going to be a lot easier than one more round of having just one algae. So my next one, I'm paying this algae and this two power to go over here to the control room where I place doesn't matter, just says that three people can go there. You can move three times in the turn. Um, and I'm going to move the three direction, which is down here. I don't get anything. That, oh, sorry. I don't get anything now from here, but that's I would have harvest during the harvest phase, which consequently we're going to right now. So during the harvest phase, the AI will return any dice that they have out at the six action boards. And we see he does have one at the academy. So that's going to join here on his board. And after returning dice, you're going to gain gems. His rightmost dice is here. So the icon above it says to gain two gems. And that's what he will gain. So that's the end of the harvest phase for the AI. So we go to our harvest phase. We're going to gain three, di three water and one dice from the dice pool. So I'm putting those three here, adding the dice here to the pool. I think these were 10 water that I spent for, uh, what was the other action I did? Getting a ship or moving one of the two. Both of the same cost, two energy, 10 water. So I'm all out of stuff. All right, so I've got my three water and my dice from the planet. So now I go here, I've got my six. I placed that six there, so I'm gonna get another dice and a gem. Okay, so I've harvested, but I gained my, my, uh, my gem, my dice, and the things from the planet. So now let's move on to our rest phase. So during the rest phase, we check to see if the AI needs any dice. The rightmost says gems, it has its three dice minimum, so it doesn't need any. So the last thing we do is we discard the guards. Our rest phase, we draw back the dice that we placed out two from the action boards, one from our farms, and we check to see if we're within our max values. Five dice are eight cards. Yep, we're good to go. We're gonna move on to round two. Let's check the event. Gain one additional gem when action dice at the mining camp. Probably means I'm gonna to go to the mining camp this turn. I really like to try to take advantage of those events and play them parallel to um, my, my strategy of playing my player card. That's kind of how I've played this game. It's been really enjoyable that way, trying to match your best case scenario for the card and with your player ability to try to max those scores. Forgot to turn this over, sorry. That's another plus two, one victory point, which I would like to fill in here. I do like trying to fill those garages. They can really, getting them maxed out can give you um, like 15 points there. And, when you're scoring about 60, 70 points, 15 is, is, a, is a nice chunk for sure. All right, so we've revealed. We're planning on going to the mining camp. Let's roll the dice and see what actually happens. All right, let's pull them over here. Well, we know we need water in order to do the mining camp. <laughs> and we only have three water now. The only way to get more water in turn would be to move the harvester, which means we'd have to move up here. That would give us three, six water. And we could afford something, at least one of the gems. But I don't think I might need to do that. But I also don't know if I want to stay on um, that part, that, that uh, spot in the planet, because I don't need another dice. So maybe getting down here to the algae, get six algae that could fund me. Uh, for sending things out in garages for a little while, for at least a turn or two. Um, and I do like the idea of moving down to get a gem. So in order to move that direction, I have to get a four. Did I roll a four? Yep, I did roll a four. Uh-oh, but how do I move 
power or water, and I don't have either one of those things. So maybe I won't be moving this turn. That's kind of sad. Oh, I could take the market action and trade this for the two. So remember, left to right. So in order to, I only, I'm only going to want to make one trade. I'm going to need I'm going to need this one. Oh, I can't manipulate it. Ooh, playing left to right is very hard. I didn't play that the first correctly the first couple times. I, I I played. You could play your dice in any order, but it's. I went back before I did this video, and it's definitely left to right, and that's going to make it very tricky here. So there's going to be some some analysis paralysis here, trying to figure out what I can do. So I think the first thing I've got to do. Well, I. I, I definitely need goods, so I think I'm going to send these two, my two highest down here and pull in these goods. I'm going to pull in water, seven water, and two energy is what I'm thinking I'm going to need. Um, I might grab that algae, though, um, just so I can start getting stuff done here. All the energy would let me move. It would let me uh, get another garage uh, to ma manipulate my dice. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here with this four and put it here at the mining camp. So I would need one water. And I'll get two gems back. And then with this two, I'll pay this one algae. And then I'll have um, hold on. This I'm going to gem. This I'm trading. I'm going to be trading gems. Two gems for goods, maybe power. And then that three would push me down if I get the two power. It's not going to cost me any algae. I could put the two power here and move down here to get six and four. So between the six water and the four algae, I could then switch this over to energy. And I could come back with seven and six, 13 water, four algae, and two power. That's, I think that's enough to refresh. Then I can start playing some of these cards and doing some stuff. All right, so I think that's my order. I'm going to get a gem. I'm going to trade those gems for energy, um, uh, maybe for algae too. I might only trade one. We'll see when I get there, math it out. And then, then I'm going to use those energy that I got to move my harvester. That's the plan. The one thing that would throw a complete wrench in it is if he draws market, but he's got enough gems where I think he's going to be able to do the depository or the negotiation board. Let's see what happens. So the first is he's going to move in the direction of one. Okay, so the direction of one is this way. He can't move this way. He can jump through the arrows across the board like this, um, but he can't go. If he runs into the end this way, he just actually doesn't move. So it is okay for him not to move. Long story short, he's not moving this turn. Then we're going to place a one at the negotiation board of yellow and paint gems. So the lowest cost here is a two, so he will play his one right there, paying the two gems. This is the very first one, so he moves the advancement that matches that dice to the leftmost uh, spot available on the board. So he just uh, cleared out his gem um, pool and made it to the negotiation board. We're going to draw one more. It is the depository. He can't do the depository. The next is the foundry. He's going to place a five at the foundry. That is here, where we get the ships. Um, he doesn't do anything to the ships. It just blocks us from going. Um, and he also draws another card, anything but the market. And it's going to be the market. He's going to throw the whole wrench in what we're doing here. So um, He's going to place, sorry, he's going to place a one die at the market. He always places on the leftmost one, the one we wanted to, and he's going to gain one gem. Okay. So that kind of screws us up. We can still do this action. We'll go here. We'll make it a five. We'll, by paying, and we'll, then we'll pay because we have the plus one. So that four becomes a five. five. Six minus five is one. Here's my one water. I get two gems from the uh, mining camp instead of just the one because of the new ground, which means I have three gems. 
I wanted to go here and trade, but I can't trade. Um, so that, that does need me absolutely no good. So the other option I could look at here now is going up here um, to, to place a dice up there. Um, that's definitely an option because I am going get, to be getting a dice here because I can't move. I don't have energy. I don't have any way to get energy except for the market. But I don't have two algae or three water to spend to get one energy and I would need two to move. So I think this is the, the way I'm going to have to change it here. I'm going to do two, di two gems, I think, two gems. And I'm going to place my two there. So... Um, I get to secretly look at uh, any two gem uh, caches. So I'm paying my two gems. I'm going to look at two. Well, I'm heading in this direction. And because I'm the only player, I'm just going to reveal them. So this is a four. That's the lowest value that's out there. And this one is a seven. That's the second highest. So if I, if I linger in this area of water and algae, then I can get... Um, seven victory i can possibly get seven victory points at the end of the game if i can get onto that gem cash so i paid my price i got my benefit from my uh the the race that i'm interacting with negotiating with and i placed a two which is the first two which means i get an, a, an advancement i could get a foundry i could move my harvester that sounds pretty interesting i could gain a dice um I can gain a gem or I can gain two item cards. At this point, if these affect each other, if I move, I don't get a dice, I'm gonna be down a dice. Do I want, really want five dice to roll again? Is that really important? It gives me more flexibility, but I could also just play this on my farm next time with a six if I roll it. It would be nice to just get another spaceship, not have to pay 10. So I think that's what I'm going to do, actually. I will go to the foundry, um, and I will take... This one lets me flip. This one lets me add up to two. I'll take the one that lets me add up to two. And I'm going to put that one there. Because I know I'll use it. So now I'm looking at three, four victory points for my garage at the end of the game so far. Okay, so um, then I check for any setbacks. It's a two. The most is greater than or equal to eight. So we're safe there. Um, so that's, then I've got this action. It doesn't cost me anything, but I don't have anything I can do with one gem or two water. So this goes back to the cantina right there and I get two water. I was actually also playing the cantina wrong. I thought you could just put a dice there and, and get two water, but it makes a lot more sense playing it with the have to do your dice left to right because I see now there are times you're not going to be able to use the dice for the plan you wanted because somebody goes to the market or somebody goes to the foundry and you're not going to use it. So I've actioned all my dice in my garages. So let's take a look at our harvest phase. During the harvest phase, the AI is going to return their dice from the board. So we see that they've got one, two dice. They're going to return them. And he's going to, she's, she's going to gain gems she's going to gain gems the amount of the right most and that's going to be one gem so she'll have two for next turn which is good because i'm glad i play, paid that two now because there's a pretty high likelihood that he'll uh place at the, that she'll place at the uh, negotiation board all right so that was the harvest phase for the ai let's take a look at mine i'm going to gain three more water and another dice okay so i gained my water and dice i'm now sitting at s seven water um and I'm going to have my five dice again. I lo I'm losing one from the negotiation board up there. Uh, now I'm going to harvest from my farms. I'm going to take... Um, I think I'm going to take algae now so I can pay for things. Because I'm only going to... Well, I'll be able to play three dice up here next time. So maybe I take the water so I can move. Let's take the water. That's going to be seven water and I'm going to take the energy here two energy so I'm going to take seven water and two energy for these farms okay I've taken the seven water and two energy now we're on to the rest phase the rest phase we check to see if she gains any dice she doesn't because she has three and we discard her cards 
And during my rest phase, I'm going to return dice from the player action boards, the Katina, and my farms. And I'm going to check to make sure I have no more than five dice, no more than eight cards. And I'm going to move on to round three. All right, let's get into the next round. Let's do, reveal our new event. Mm, water tax. The headquarters does not reward water or item cards. So no bonus if we go to the headquarters. This time simply just going first the next turn. All right, so that was the event. Let's roll our dice. Oh, I got a lot of low numbers. That makes me worried for the farm that I've got. Okay. So there's the five I've got. One of the first things I always look at is the directions I can move. Four might be nice. I can move down here, start getting a little bit of water, a little bit of algae. Algae could be nice. I could start negotiating on this track. It lets me make market trades. I could trade some of these gems. That's a possible avenue I could go down. Do I want to commit three dice? We could do this. Add a three. Do five. I'll make this a six so I can get another dice. That means I'd have two dice. What do I want to do? Is there anything I want to build yet? Oh, if I build this, it will cost me five less to move, which would be nice. So if I'm going to build that one, I'd have to use this because it has to be a three, four, or five, or six. Then I could put my two here, which would give me a plus two. And then I could move four into this spot to get that water and algae. So do I want to gain more resources and move? Would I have enough? Yeah, I'm going to have enough water. It's going to cost me five. I don't have any algae. I don't have enough algae to buy a, another one. So we can't do that plan. So let's refocus here. Do I have any doubles? Let's look at what the farms give me. Victory points, water, and discarding a six to get a gem. Well, I already kind of have that there. Hmm, these low dice numbers really hurt me here. I suppose I don't have enough goods to do any negotiation. Could I trade this gem for algae? Is that what I want to do? Do I want to? Be nice. How much it depends on how much moving around the board I think I'm going to be doing. It's giving me, it gives me that five less water. Mm -mm -mm. What I wouldn't do for one of these flip dice just to get some higher values. Well, I could do two and two and get a farm because that's going to be if I get that farm, it's a three, four, seven over two. That's a five point. It's a five point move. Doesn't really help me beyond now, but again, don't have the algae. I'd have to use my water to pay for it. So I think I think we're gonna go back here and use every single time I've really used this the player's skill to kind of drive a lot of my decision making between that and the event. So I they give me this tile, this farm from the beginning of the, re the game for a reason. So I'm gonna try to utilize as much as I can. So that'll make it a six. So if I'm committing that, let's I think we want more power. Do we want more? I think we want more algae. So this two would become a five and I would get three algae there. I like the idea of moving because I don't need another dice this turn and I get another gem. So if I put the four here and I'm going to need, do I want the power or the water? Let's do the water. So it'll be five. So five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just move this over here. So we're planning on setting that four over to the control room to move our harvester one step closer to, I mean, one step down here to get that gem. Um, 
And then this two, what could we do with this two? We don't need any, we don't need any dice. It could get, get could get another ship, possibly. Um, do I want to trade? Yes, I could trade and get algae for next turn. Although I'm going to get six algae now next turn. So that should be enough to be able to purchase these things. So do we want to put it in the, ah, it would have been like, oh, let's put it in the headquarters this turn. Um, but I'm not going to get any bonus for going to the headquarters. So now I feel like I don't want to go to the headquarters. Would I move again? I could move here and then there. That doesn't really get me anything. Oh, three. It's a two, three, four. I could move twice and get down. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move twice and just get down to that corner and get some good resources coming back. Because I don't know you spend these two energy. I don't need, I only need one energy for this one. Ugh, but I hate to like do all this moving. I'm not going to use that card anymore. Eech. I don't know what to do with this last two. I could put it here and just farm up and get a whole bunch of stuff and say, you know what, I'm going to generate some resources here. Maybe that's what I do this turn. All right, I'm going to lock that in. Because I've committed this dice to make, put, add the plus three, so I might as well get these resources while I can so I don't have to use those dice for that next time. All right, so we've planned out our our turn. We're only going to move in the control room. That's it. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a gather resource round. So we're on to the AI. First thing, move in the direction of five. Five is directly to the left. Can't move, so he stays right there. And then he's going to place, she's going to place a five at the green level. Um, she can afford a cost of two gems. So two gems goes right there. That's the first five on the board. So that that advancement moves over there, triggered by the AI. Discards its two gems. Next, second card is a four. I, the, she'd place at the depository if she had a gem. She doesn't, so instead she goes to the academy and gains two dice. She's going to put that four in the appropriate spot here um, and take two dice from her, her pool and add them to her board. That's the end of her actions. So my action is going to be really quick. I'm spending this four over here. And I'm spending ten water. And I'm moving my harvester down here. She's giving me another gem and will give me some algae to work with to purchase some of these cards the next turn. So now we're into the harvest phase. The AI is going to return its dice from the six one, from the six player actions or action boards, excuse me, and she's going to gain two gems because that is above her rightmost dice. Now my harvest phase, I'm going to gain three water and six algae. Okay, so I've gained that three water, six algae. Now I've got to decide here: do I want water or algae? I'm going to take four more algae. For this one, I'm going to take two more energy, and I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get a uh, a gem and a dice. So let me get all those things. All right, so I gained uh, all right, so I gained my three algae, my two power, and my one gem, and my one dice. So now we're into the rest phase. The AI checks to see if she gains any dice. She doesn't need any dice, so let's go ahead and discard those cards. End of her turn. And we return all dice to my base card. Count one, two, three, four, five, six. I discard one dice. Okay. And we're on to the next round. It's going to be the halfway point in the game. New stock, gain two item cards when actually die at the market. Okay, so if I go to the market, I'm going to get some more of these item cards, which I think would be beneficial. So, so let's go ahead and roll and see what we're going to do this turn. Okay, got some sixes. I'm going to stick with my plan. I'm going to keep doing this. So that tells me that I need to send one of these to 
either depository this turn or the negotiation board. So let's see my possibilities. I do have two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Ten algae. I could play it here. It's a lot of algae for five victory points. But I could take advantage of the market phase and trade these gems out. I could also action a dice here, a three, which would get me an advancement, which could, could be two cards, and seven victory points. That's not a bad choice. Knowing that I'm going to get a dice back here, I like that option a lot. Um, and I'd want to place a three or a four, so let's do this four here. We can do it last, it doesn't matter, and that's going to cost us, what do we, three, say three gems to place there. We'll get that dice back and we'll have seven victory points, and we'll get to either take a gem or two item cards. I do still want to try to action. What else do I want to do? do I, um, I do want to go to the depository. But that will cause me to lose two dice. Do I want to move again? I think I want to... I could build that farm. Since I'm not doing that for the algae, I could build that farm for the victory points. So let's do that, remember? And going to the laboratory, I have to have two that are the same. So I could do this. And they could both be fours. Right? This will go down one, this will go up two. It costs me one algae to go there. And I'm going to have to spend 10 water or 3 algae to get the laboratory. So here's the other 3 algae. Okay, and then with my 6, I could move in this direction. I could get some more gems. It would cost me 0 water for 1 or 10 water for 2. Do I need water? Yeah, it looks like everything here, if I want to build them, needs water. So let's go here and farm out that six just to get some water because I think we're going to take some cards and see if we can get some better cards that work for us because I think I need to squeak out some victory points um, by getting item cards here. All right, so I think those are my moves. I'm going to build a laboratory. I'm going to negotiate, and I'm going to farm water and dice and gems so that I can slowly start maybe building out and I'm going to gain item cards. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, now that we've planned, let us see what the IA, where the AI is going to move. Uh, for value, move down to the left. So he's going to go over this water and to this gem. He's going to gain that gem. I'm going to discard this water. Next, he's going to put a 4 value on the yellow and his 3 gems. So, 3 gems here. He's going to go here. That's the first 4 that was placed. So, that is taken up. And the value is 5, so it's still below the, uh, the setback range. And that's going to cost 3 gems. And then the second one is going to be a three. Can't play at the depository anymore, so she's going to go to the academy and gain two dice. And this is a three, so I put it in the one, two, three value spot. And two dice get added. So you're All right, so we've actioned and executed for the AI, so let's action execute for us. These two are together. This is going to be a four. That's going to be a four. Like that dice manipulation there pretty strong. And I'm discarding three for the uh, farm and one for the cost. And I think I'm going to take this one pure victory points because I'm already committing a lot of stuff to the... I don't think I'm very want for resources. I don't think three waters can do a lot for me. But here I've changed it from getting two points to now getting four seven points. It's a five point card. That's more than any of these cards. So and it just cost me three algae two dice at a turn. My next one I'm going to be doing will be this four, which I'm going to put up here. Oh, he just did the four. Shoot, so I'm not going to get any advancement there. Boo! 
So I'm going to put the four there, pay my three gems, three. Uh, I don't get uh, secretly peek at two gem caches, I guess. I'll just flip them over just for wandering purpose. That's a six. And this one is a six. So I do think I want to start moving over to the seven over there. Okay, so those are the dice that I actioned out. I don't get any advancements because the four was already placed. I don't get any setbacks because my value is six played there. Um, so in the harvest phase, she's placed out one dice, so she's going to get three gems this turn. Um, now my harvest phase, I'm going to get three water, six algae. I'm also going to take water here. Mm, although I would get four more algae. Let's count this algae up because uh, everything is starting to get expensive here. And algae does seem to be I'm able to. I, there's a lot of space in algae. So let's see how much I've got. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. If I take the four algae, I could pay the 12, get seven more victory points. Still have enough to pay for some algae in the next rounds. Or do I want water? I said I wanted water to play out cards. What's going to be more beneficial? What's going to be easier? Getting seven points there or getting seven points worth of points of cards getting out? That's going to cost me five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, ten, fourteen, twenty, twenty-two goods. But they do give me benefits. But how often am I going to be using these benefits now at this point? Do I just now focus on negotiation board? I would get a setback if I play anything above a two. Hmm. That's a very interesting decision. I think I'm going to go with I feel like my need for water is kind of past and I'm kind of in by the water. I'm going to be heading I'm going to be heading towards the water anyways that way. So let's Oh, I would have liked to I've got enough to pay for it. Then it'll cost 5 less. If I get this out so I can move over that way, I need less water. Yeah, so I'm going to take the algae. I'm taking four algae for this one, and I'm taking a gem and a dice for that one. Okay, I've completed my harvesting, so we're resting. The AI is full of dice. She won't get any dice, and I'm going to gain my dice back. One, two, three, four, added to the one I got, which is five. All right. Let's move on to the next turn. Clear skies. Ignore all costs from garages. Oh, so I could place all five out here. That's pretty nice. Okay. So let's roll our dice and see what our options are. Whoa, two of them kicked out. There we go. Oh, we got a bunch of nice low ones. That's okay. We wanted some low ones for the negotiation board, right? So we'll start there. If I, could, if I make this a three... I will get the advancement, but I also get a setback. I could discard these two. I don't really care about getting those now. This is the only one I really care about to move my harvester over to the seven points. So I could think about playing this one as a 9.1 because it's going to make me move over there. And I'm going to get water enough to, to fund me getting over there. So I think that's okay. So I will do that. That one with how many algae do we want to pay? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gets us five points. Ten, eleven, twelve gets us seven points. So let's do the twelve. Then we talked about building this one. Action and a dice. We'll do our six here for sure. We're gonna action and dice up there. Well, let's make it a four. And it's gonna cost us five water and two algae. Two, three, four, five. And two algae. That's going to get us that core. Then we're going to want to move to get some of that water. Because we're middle middle of the way through, so I mean, I really could one, two, three turns to get over there. 
Um, so this one, I'm going to increase it to make it a 2. I'm going to pay 2 power to move that way. Oh, well, no. How about we do this? Oh, no. It's got to go that way. Because... Because I have to move first. And this won't let me manipulate a 4 down. Oh, I could do this. Hold on. Let's do it this way. Because the order is going to matter. So this is going to be a 3 when I do that. Then I'm going to use this 2 to move. No. Hold on. What was I thinking? So in order to build this, it has to be a 4. So let's do this. We're going to build that first. And then we're going to move. This would be a 2 to move directly over there. And because of our hydraulic core we're going to build, it's only going to cost us 5 water, which we have. That's to move the water. Then we've got 1 left, a 1. We are gaining a dice. We're getting rid of 1, 2 dice. So maybe we go to the academy. But I don't have any water to spend for the for gaining a dice back. So I'll have only four dice. So what's another option I can do? Do I build another ship? Turn. I can't do there, so I think it's gonna have to be a ship. And it's okay because I get to ignore the cost there. So two power to get a, to get this ship. Okay. Alright, looks like we're taking a lot of actions. Um, let's see how it all plays out. So let's see where our AI is going to move. Six to the upper right corner, up against the wall. Excuse me, sorry, up against the wall. So he's not, she's not going to move. Then she's going to place a six in the depository. It's a six again, so she's going to cover up that one there. And she's going to discard one gem to be able to place that. So she's got 12 points on that board already because we're counting each pip at the end of the game. Second action, another six. It says we would place uh, gems in the yellow track, the Z card track, but she can't afford that. So the next thing she would do is go to the academy um, to get two dice. So we put the six here, and she gets two more dice and fills up her, her, uh, her dice pool. Okay, now we're to my turn. So we're going to take this four. We're going to make it a two, no, a three. We're going to place it here and discard 12. 12 algae gone. Um, we place the 3 here. So we, this is, we get one of these benefits. We're going to take the... Do we want to take two cards or a gem? I get to do three market trades. <coughs> Taking the gem might help me be able to do some market trades. What do I need, though? I'm going to be... I'll need one more, so I need two power, so I just do the gem for a power. And I take the two cards. What's, t what's going to be more beneficial, having gems or cards? I think cards. So we'll go here, and we're drawing two cards. One, two. And we got the Yeti, two per gem, and the algae cells, which cut the cost by two to go to the laboratory. Nothing great, but it's okay. Um, we did make our setback. We have eight, so we're going to just put this one over here. We will discard these two because I don't think I'm going to the laboratory anymore. Um, I, I, I'm going to go to the depository. I don't know how much more I'm going to be going to the depository. I guess I'll get rid of the, this one here. So I'm just cutting these two cards as my setback. And the negotiations did not go well that time with the natives. All right, so next we're doing this one, which we're going to put here. And we're going to gain a dice. 
Um, we're going to build the hydraulic core for five water and two algae. And that hydraulic core is going to let me spend five less to move whenever I use the control room. So it's going to cost me either two power or five water. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do next. I'm going to use this two here and five water because of my hydraulic core. Five water. And I'm going to move this way. I don't get any bonus, but I'm going to be getting just a little bit more water this next turn. Um, and then my last action dice is here to the foundry. It's a one, so I've got to take this one. Will incre let me increase the value of my dice by two, and it costs me two power. So although I might not use it very often because the cost of algae is going up, um, I'm at least increasing my point value to now six, whereas before it was, or I'm sorry, five, six, seven, whereas before it was three, four. So gain some victory points there. Okay, those are all the dice that I have to action, so let's go to the harvest phase. AI is going to return her dice from the academy. She's full, so this dice just gets discarded back to the pool. I'm going to harvest by gaining six water, four algae, a gem, and a dice. I'll get those now. Okay, I got my resources, gain my dice. So now we're on the rest phase. We check to see if the AI needs to gain any dice. Nope, she's at full. And I gain my dice from the action boards and my farms. So I'm only rolling four this time. Um, but I'm, I gained seven, 10, 12 victory points that turn. So not a bad turn on that one, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and move off from the next action. All farms produce double their resources. Ooh, so I definitely want to activate this and get two gems and two dice, which means I get some more flexibility to place things on the board. On the board. So let's see if uh, this, ye this Yeki would be nice, but I'm only going to have two turns, but I'm going to be getting double. I'll have two. This could turn into an eight or nine or ten. Ten point card, which would be nice because I had 12 points the whole last round. All right, so we got our six that we wanted for our farm. That's awesome. So we know we're going to commit to that. We need to build this guy. So I've got the two gems. I've got the three water. I got the four algae. One, two, three, four. And I've got the one energy. So I could build now. Let's see if the dice get us there. So we need a three. We can use any of these dice to build up there. So let's use this three. It could let us move our harvester in any direction. We could move down here. So then I'd want a one to get up there. No, that won't work if I go down. I could move I could move this three. Oh, I don't have enough water. Shoot, because I'm buying that item. So do I farm? Oh. All farms produce double, so I might as well, right? Um, we can do this five and six. Here and here, and I could gain some water and some algae to get for the last two rounds. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to use my farms as much as possible. And then with this three, what do I want to do? I could get a gem. I'm not going to lose any dice this turn. No, I'm going to lose one dice. I've got to put this three up there. But I'm going to get two back, and I'm paying for it for there. And this could be a three or a four. Perfect. So I'm going to get hopefully a ten point, eight, possibly ten points, because I'm going to get these next two gems uh, card this turn. And I'm going to get a whole bunch of resources to try to get some other things done. Moving my, my uh, harvester, which I'll get to move once this turn, and I can move once at the end of the next turn. Awesome. Okay, so I think I'll get there, and I think um, I'm, I'm looking at 17 to 20 more points um, just from what my possibilities are at right here. So that's good. All right, so I've planned it all out. Oh, I forgot to discard these from the... How embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're going to uh, reveal. AI is going to move in the direction of 4. 4 is going to be bottom left. Nope, hits the end of the wall, so AI does not move. And then AI is going to place a 4 in the red track with only two two gems, but two is the top one, so it can't afford that, so it's going to go to the next one. And here it is. It's going to go to the, the laboratory and upgrade its first upgrade. So that's the first star. So when this happens, 
he's going to get a plus one gem whenever he does the um, gain gems, the harvest phase. He's going to get one on top of however many he has up top, and he's going to get two victory points at the end of the game. So that's the first card. Let's play the second card. Play a five. If he's got a uh, gem to discard, which he does. So the five is going to come up here, the depository. Take that up, and it's five victory points, essentially. He played a five-point uh, five item card right there. So he's, he's racking up some points there in the depository. But those are his two cards, so his turn is done. So now I'm going to action my dice up here in the three, and I think I'm going to move. I think I'm going to move my harvester. Now the question is, do I move him down here? Oh, let's finish the first action, which is buying this card. So I'm going to buy the uh, the Yeki, which is going to give me one victory point per two gem. And I'm going to be getting two gem. So this is going to be a nine-point card right here. So I'm building that one. Sorry, hitting the camera, guys. I apologize. I'm building that one there. Um, discarding these these goods. So I purchased my card, paid the goods, I placed this three. Now, I mean, I placed it up here. Do I really want to move? Do I want to gain a dice back? I'm getting two dice back, and I've got three, so I'm going to have my five, so I don't need that. Do I want any more item cards to work to or towards, or do I want to work towards maybe getting some more negotiation, moving my... I think I need to think about getting gems, because now I have that, that trigger. So let's, let's go with what we know, which is a gem. So I am going to put a three here. I'm going to move down this way and get me this gem. Um, so I've actioned all my dice here, so we're into the harvest phase. So the AI is going to return any dice she has on the player boards. That's the one at the, the laboratory. So now she's at a plus two gems, plus the one for her advancement. She's going to get three gems this turn. And now it's my harvest phase. I'm going to get nine, nine water, six algae there. I'm probably going to take... If I, I'm, taking, I'm getting six algae, and then I'd get three more. That'd be nine algae. I could get another five points there. And here I've got... I could get eight water. Oh, it's going to produce double, actually. So that would be six plus my three plus six. That's 12, 15. I could get nine more points there or have the five and be able to pay for a few things. So let's take that algae because it's double. All farms produce double this turn because of our extra growth. So we're going to actually get six, 12 algae. We're going to get, do we want water or do we want energy? We're getting nine water that should be enough because i just need five twice i need ten yep so we're going to do the the uh the energy so we're going to get nine water 12 algae and four power two gems and two dice so let me get all that together all right here are our goods now moving forward after we've collected it we've done all our farms so now we're on the rest phase. We check to see if the AI gains any dice. She does not. She has at least three. So then I take all my dice back, and I've got my five. And then we're going to move on to the second to last round. All right, let's start this round with the plan phase. Let's see what the new event is. You n must... Discard one item card to action dice at the negotiation board. So meaning, if I want to place a dice on this board, I've got to discard one of my cards. I luckily do have an extra card, but I was hoping for a bonus that turn. All right, let's roll our dice, see what we're able to do this turn. No sixes. All right, so I'm thinking I'm going to want to have got just one turn after this one. i got to move twice. One, two. So I want to move with this one in this direction here. That will get me there, and then I'll need a two for the next one. So I'm going to put this one here. Is that, the, is that the first thing I need to do? I'm going to use two power probably to move over there. 
Okay. So what's my other thing I want to do? I wanted to action dice. I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 right now. That could get me nine. I want more. So if I wait another round to do that next round, I'll get my four. Because I am going to have to spend some now. Maybe I'll have to farm something. Ugh. All right, let's see what else. I also want to get another ship to fill this one up. I'd want a five, uh, three, four, five, or six, because it's going to give me a victory point. I want a victory point at this point. I'm not so concerned about the costs. Um, and actually, I'm going to take these two par back. I'm going to spend five. You see, I'm taking. It's going to look like I'm taking one, but it's because I took it from the five here to pay five water because of my hydro cycle. Let's me move. Okay, so that's at eight. So I'd have to play a one there. That's not going to do be possible. So let's go back here. I want to build. Let's use this four. I'm going to do two power to build another ship. And that will max me out on my thing there. Oh, I could do the foundry as well and get another gem. That'd be nice. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So we're actually going to go here with the to get our ship and we'll do these two with one algae for the crutch of the garage, three algae for the farm tile. Okay, then I'm gonna do my five here. The two energy to get. So I'm moving once, I'm building a laboratory or a new farm, I'm going to the laboratory to build a farm, and then I'm going to Maybe I should do this one, this three here, and then I can farm here this five and get algae. I'll get three plus six. That'll be nine algae. I've got 10, 11. That will get put me to 20. So that will give me enough algae to, to action there and to, uh, and to place them out. Awesome, really great. That's how we're gonna do this thing. Let's see. Uh, let's hope the uh, the AI doesn't uh, doesn't take any of my actions. He's got a lot of gems, so hopefully he'll just place out and score victory points. Let's see what happens. First one's a two, so he moves in the two direction, which gives me straight across. So he's going to come bust all this up. He's going to eat up all that water, all that water, and that gem. So bye bye water. And now he's going to have five gems. And then with that two, yep, he's going to place in the Jarek red track. With the two, he's going to spend um, as many dice as he has, five, or gems as he has five. So that means he'll go here. And that'll be the second two, or two, four, six, eight. So he's actually going to trigger this one. He doesn't discard anything, he just moves it from the left side to the first, the leftmost space on the right. But he's now going to get 12 victory points, he's going to discard all his gems. No foundry, no laboratory, no foundry, no laboratory. Yeah, He's going to go to the foundry and draw another card. So that's going to be a four. So that's going to go over here to the foundry. And he's going to get to draw another card. So he's gonna, here's his third card. He's going to go to the market, the other place that I would want to go to try to get some algae with a three. And she's going to get, it's a she. I keep saying he and she this whole time because sometimes the AI is a man, sometimes it's a female looking thing, looking um, robot. So I've been very non specific with genders with my pronouns this whole game, and I hope it's not affecting anyone. All right, so I went to the market for three. That's the end of that execute phase. Um, now I'm going to do mine. I'm going to be able to move. This is going to be a two because I can up it by one. 
No, I do want it to be a one. And he's going to go up here. I went from there to there. All right. And now that was cost me five water to pay. Now my next thing, I'm going to go with these two fours. And I'm spending four algae to get... Uh, oh, I was going to do this gem. Might as well try it. Get another gem. It's victory points. Nothing else was going to give me victory points there, so I might as well try it. And that's going to cost me the three algae and one algae to send off that ship. Okay, and now this one was going to go to the foundry with the two, but that is now gone. I don't have to spend it there. I could, I could, I can't negotiate it yet because I don't want to, because I want, I don't have enough algae to get my 12 points. I could go to the depository, but I don't want to build necessarily this one. Um, it's only three points. Could I go over here? I'm gonna get four algae Four and three, four and eight, that's gonna be seven more algae. That will put me at 10, 11, that'll be put me right at 18. I won't have any algae, so I'm gonna do this actually to trade. Um, and that's gonna cost me three algae. So let me get my change here. Sorry, I have, I have. I set myself in a situation where I need to break change, so give me a second. Okay, here I broke my change. I can now place this dice here at the market. I want some algae. Um, I'm gonna give you getting water back, so I can make this trade up to three times. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I was reading that card at yeah, nine. I'm gonna get nine. 13, 16. So I need two more for that. So that's going to be three water. And I've got five, six, seven. So I'll do it twice and get four algae. One, two, three, four algae. And I'm going to do one power to get two more so I can fund so I can have four algae to do things around the board ooh algae flying around uh, so I can have four algae to do things around the board these are just one water but I am going to get 12 water here so I should be able to fund my moving with no problem okay so there are all my actions so we're into the harvest phase she is going to return her dice from the action boards and gain gems she gains two gems. Now my harvest phase, I'm going to get 12 water, 4 algae, plus 3 from this one. So 12 water, 7 algae. I'll get those right now. Okay, there are my goods updated. I'm setting aside these 18 for placement on the negotiation board. This five I'm going to use to try to move on my gem cache. These gems are for here. Hopefully I add another one to get another point. Um, and uh, this power should hopefully get us to the foundry. All right, so that was our harvest action rest. Let's we'll see if she doesn't gain any dice. And we're going to discard her cards. And, uh, and I'm going to return my four, five dice. And that takes us to the last round. We'll reveal the event. It's really no no big deal event. Um, I'm not going to reveal these other two for the sake of time. The AI is just going to end up moving to the closest one, so it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get over there. I'm definitely going to go for this one. So let's go ahead and roll our dice. Let's see what we're going to do this turn. Oh, again, no sixes. But that's okay. We are definitely going to do this three here with two energy and an algae. We're going to do the two here. 
Oh, wait. Let's do this five, right? So we can maybe get this benefit of a six. And we're going to do our algae. I'm going to put this one. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 algae to place there in the negotiation board. Get rid of that 10. Um, I think then I'm going to go. I think then I'm going to go here, make this a three, so that both of these are sixes. And I'm going to get two more gems. And maybe if I get that, if there are three more gems, that would give me six, which then would give me th make this th three points. Um, and I count these gems for points anyways as well. So it'll be six points as well. So we're looking to max out our spaceships, get on the negotiation board for a big 12-pointer. Oh, we also wanted to move. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. That kind of stinks. I needed one more dice, didn't I? The two is what we needed to move directly across. I think that's going to be more beneficial because that's that would be if I get if I get both of these I've got three I'm hopefully going to get four and that'd be one point yeah it's going to be better to move so let's move this two here and I've got the two power I could do five water doesn't matter two power to move directly over to the gem cache which means I'm going to be able, I, neither one of these are going to, going to do anything there. I'm left with three, no, to place it. So I'm going to put this here, make it a three, do this there to get another gem. But that's not going to do me any good. That's one victory point because yeah, that's just going to give me one victory point. So, like, but I think that's the best thing that I can do. Oh, hold on. Okay, so instead of that, let's go here, pay the two, and I'll try to get some, I'll try to get two gems there. And then that means this last one is just going to go down here because I can't afford it. And that'll be that. Okay, let's see what the AI is going to do this turn. She is going to go in the direction of five, which is straight across. Okay, and she's going to spend four gems to place a five on the red track. Uh -huh. Okay. And then her next one, she can't place on green track, so she's going to go to the market with a two and get two gems. That's two victory points. Okay, that's her last turn. So now we go to mine. I'm going to go here to this five, make it a six. So I will get a setback. Shoot, I didn't predict that. Yes, okay. So um, I'll do. I get a setback. I'll discard one of these gems because I can't afford to get rid of one of my farms or planes or move away from towards the center. So I gotta do that one. Um, I discard my algae. And I forgot to do this last time for the that I placed for that three. I'm supposed to be allowed to make market trades. But I don't think there's anything I necessarily need to trade for. So I think that's all that's gonna it's gonna be. Alright, next one here with this three I'm gonna place here in the foundry. Pay my one algae to power. 
And I'm going to get this one to go here to max out both my garages and my farms. I'm going to use this two by paying two power. And I'm going to move directly across here to gain seven victory points. Two gems. By actioning my dice here is four. 16 minus four is 12. I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 water, which is going to give me two gems instead of just the one. So I'll be an extra victory point there. So everything you just saw a little bit ago, if I can't edit out, you're going to have to sit through that and get to this part. But if you made it this far, well, it's another 45 seconds. All right, so discarding all my water. I have no more water. Discarding these two algae to have done that and place that dice there. Those are all my dice I've actioned out, and I've left with one little algae left over. Wow. Okay. So now we're under the harvest phase. The AI is going to return dice to its board and gain gems. It's going to gain one gem. Um, my harvest phase, I'm not going to harvest anything. And I'm going to get four, so three algae. The resources don't, oh, the only resource that's worth anything at the end is gems. Gems are one victory point per. Now we're on the rest phase. She gains a dice. Not that it matters. We discard her cards. Not that it matters. But we just finished everything out. My rest phase. One, two, three, four back. All right, so now we're going to go into scoring. OK, so it tells us to, uh, in the rules that we score our score first. So. Um, looking at our negotiation board, we scored 34 points in the negotiation board. If we look at our items, we scored 8, 10, 11, 12. If we look at our position on the planet, we score 7 more. Count up our points for our garages and farms, and we score 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 10, 21 more points count up our gems and we get five more points so sh so that should give us a total of 76 points now we're going to score for the ai she receives the value of all her negotiations plus two points per dice there so if we look at her values three and four is seven seven plus six is thirteen 13 plus 12 is 25, 25 plus 9 is 34, plus 2 points, 34, 36, oh sorry, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, so she's going to get 44 points there, then 1 point per pip, so that's going to be 12 plus 5 is 17 points for that one. The AI is going to move it to the nearest gem cache, so it's going to move it to the 8 here. So add 8. The AI is going to get 2 points for, for this, and 4 points for her gems. And that should give her a total of 65 points. That's been Circadian's First Light. And this has been Hans Solo Board Gaming. See you around.